I'm Robert Scoble and I'm the Startup Liaison Officer for Rackspace and we're here at the Rackspace Studio at TechCrunch 2012. Uh, we're seeing uh, startup after startup. This one's going to be a little different. We're going to see talk about diversity in the uh, engineering ranks here in San Francisco and the tech industry. Obviously there isn't much diversity if we really looked at it carefully and we're going to talk about that. So uh, who are you first of all? Um, so my name is Amy Kispe. I'm a senior at Carnegie Mellon studying computer science. And this year I was one of the first fellows of Code 2040. Very cool. And who are you? Uh, my name is Laura Weidman Powers and I am the executive director of Code 2040. Yeah. And what is Code 2040? What are you so, guys trying to do? Yeah, Code 2040 is a summer fellowship program. What we do is we bring incredibly talented black and Latino computer engineering students from around the country to Silicon Valley in San Francisco for a summer fellowship program. They get an internship with a top startup and we do a ton of programming. They get mentors, speaker series, company visits, an executive coach, they do a project and it just kind of gets their feet wet um, in Silicon Valley. They can see, uh, get bitten by the entrepreneurship bug, we hope. Yeah. Um, and basically we're working on kind of diversity in the ranks of engineers and founders in the Valley. Yeah, and, and let's be honest, I, I walk through a lot of startups in the engineering ranks where, where the coders are coding. It's usually male and it's usually white. Yeah. Uh, we, it's, it is, and it, it's a big problem. Well, it isn't a problem. Yeah, well, so the numbers say that it's a problem. It's yeah. basically one in 18 technical employees in Silicon Valley are black or Hispanic. And the number drops even further when you get to leadership. And the year 2040 is the year when people of color will collectively be the majority in the United States. And we think that kind of the ranks of the most innovative entrepreneurial uh, leaders of our economy should reflect that diversity by that same year. So that's what we're working towards. And, and that's where, well, and I'll get to you, that's where I think it's a problem from a couple of aspects. One, if, if, if we're going to have a strong economy in the United States and not just in San Francisco, we have to get everybody into the tech revolution, right? Not, yeah. not just white males. Yeah. Uh, and second, from a Silicon Valley perspective, we need diversity because we're serving uh, a diverse customer base. And if we, have, if we don't have diversity on our engineering teams, we're not going to develop the products that are going to be attractive to everybody, not just white males. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. And, and diversity doesn't even have to be the problem. Diversity is the solution. Yeah. Because we are currently clamoring for engineers. There's just not enough talent. And unless we start trying to appeal to the other demographics, we're not going to start getting enough talent. So you're in Carnegie Mellon, which is one of the top universities in the world, very technical. I visited there and went through the robotics uh, department and met a lot of the computer science uh, professors there. What, it, it, is college the problem? Is it, it, it you know, because I saw that in, in my college. That yeah. In my uh, uh, calculus class, I had, the first class was pretty diverse. It was about a half-half. Second, second semester, second year, it went down to 10% women. It, 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 it was almost like a filter turned on and every, uh, the women disappeared. Is that, are you seeing the same thing in college? Well, you know, it's a leaky pipeline. There's places all along from, you know, from when you're in kindergarten, from when you're at home, to when you get to college where people are not, um, that could have been going into technical fields, going into the tech industry. I think Code 2040 is attacking the students that are in college right now, these very high performing black and Latino engineers, they're saying, come to Silicon Valley, this is where you can make it. We're going to get you that network so that you can make it out here. Yeah. And I, you know, there's other places where that needs to be solved, but this is one of those great places and I'm really glad to be part of this program. Yeah. And on top of that, um, you know, when they make it, they can mentor others and serve as kind of beacons of light. We're really aiming to create a chain reaction of change where we start with um, you know, the low hanging fruit in a way. I mean, these are students that have made it all the way to be successful in college, which in an engineering field, that's tough. And we're making sure they have the skills and access and opportunity so they can make it in a professional sense as well and then inspire others back down that leaky pipeline. Yeah, the Valley really is a, a, net, a, a network. You know, I was just at a Morgan Thaler Ventures, a venture capital firm's party last night, and the, the founders of Siri were there, and the 
the uh, founder of Evernote and, uh, and on and on. Uh, and this is how the Valley works. Yeah. This is how you get jobs, this is how you get promotions, yeah. this is how you get find out about new startups that are hot, getting hot and yeah. oh, I'll join your startup or, or I'll, uh, you know, I want to start a startup with you, you know, next time you do it because everybody yeah. does it more than once yeah. Whether yeah. at that level. Yeah. I have lots of those kind of mentors or, or uh, role models, right? I mean, I, I know Steve was that and I know it can be done and I have a, a guy to look to it and I can call him on my phone. And if you're not in that network, it's hard to get that kind of uh, role model, so you you stay inspired and stay engaged and stay excited about uh, you know starting a company and, yeah. and sticking with it. Yes, yeah. we all know it, the trick to entrepreneurialism is to stick with it. Yeah. Like if, if Airbnb stopped on the thousand on the nine hundred day that they were in business, it would never have gone anywhere because they their profits were like this, yeah. and then on the nine hundred ninetieth day it started doing this right and became Airbnb. Yeah. If they had stopped on 900 day because they got bored or they thought it was they got discouraged, they wouldn't be here. Yeah. And tell me if I'm wrong. You yeah. need you need role models to keep you excited and Absolutely. keep you down a career path. Right? Absolutely. And I think what is um, kind of cool about what we're doing is that we're working with that. So that yeah. works well, and it's proven to work well. Silicon Valley obviously turns out amazing companies, amazing entrepreneurs. So what we're doing is actually creating an institutionalized bridge into those networks for our students. So we have Tristan Walker is our founder. He lends his network. Yeah. Um, ben Horowitz is on our board. We had um, Hunter Walk as a mentor uh, this past summer. Mark Bodnick, uh, Megan Quinn. We have um, you know these amazing people who are excited about the mission who are willing to kind of lend their networks to help our students. And yeah. by creating kind of an organization around that, we're going to help generations to come of these engineers as they come through. So when you're in this program, what what do you get? What do you, what, what, um, you know, what, what so are you? There's lots of um, type, there's lots of speakers, there were company visits, um, but there was also just lots of practical knowledge that we got. Um, we were in this intimate setting, we got to ask very specific questions of people that had gone gotten to great places in their careers. And then we also did things like we had a user experience design workshop at the Stanford E School and we um, had executive coaching. And yeah. so it was both getting this network but also making sure that we were improving ourselves in all those little ways that engineers really should that they don't necessarily. And that was really fantastic. All on top of like an internship where you're actually coding, where you're in this startup and it was awesome. Silicon Valley uh, has always been built on user groups. I, I remember going to user groups, and, and now we call them hackathons, right? <laughs> you know, which is really, you get in a group of, with a group of Node.js programmers, and you share ideas, and you share, and if you hit a problem while you're coding, it's like, ah, I don't know how to do this. You raise your hand, and somebody comes over and says, oh, oh, do it this way. Here's, here's what the code you should write. Are you, are you thinking about that kind of um, sort of Mentorship, you know, because yeah. mentorship goes beyond just you know being able to call Cheryl Sandberg and say, "Hey, I need help with a, a right. jerk at work or something like that." Right, right, it right. goes to this kind of integration, yeah. um, where you feel like a part of a team or a part yeah. of a movement or a part of a company yeah. that uh, empowers you, right? Yeah. So that's one of the things that we're doing in terms of the community that we're creating amongst the fellows. So there were five this past summer in our pilot. And they saw each other, you know, several days a week, almost as much as they saw their coworkers. And they could ask each other questions, and they could support one another. And that's something that's integral to what we're doing, both during the summer and as alums. They also did their own engineering project. So Amy can probably talk about that. Yeah. So actually, the five of us worked together to create a dashboard for um, find, for screening the new candidates for this next year. And we thought that was a great way to both give back to Code 2040 like figure out how to work together. We all, all had extremely different um, skill sets. Yep. So that was great to learn from each other. And then of course we also had our own like things that we learned in the starts where we were at yeah. that we could pass on. So that was really awesome. Yeah. I've talked with Cheryl Sandberg about this and she really talks about leaning into your career. What, what she really means is showing up, yeah. being loud, 
you know, guides are really loud. We, we, we'll, we'll take credit for shit we didn't do, right? and and we'll uh, and we'll charge in and, and introduce. You know, we'll, you know, I see it all the time when Ron Conway or Jeff Favier walks by. People are going, you know, guides go right up to them and introduce yeah. the, themselves. Women don't quite do that yeah. all the time. Yeah. Very, yeah. very few of them do. I yeah. mean, the good ones do. It's, Cheryl Sandberg does. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I see this as a cultural thing. Is yeah. this something that you're uh, trying to bring speakers in to, to help people lean into the career and be aggressive and be, you know, take credit for what you do? Is that kind of thing? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think part of um, you know, kind of the practical training that we do is around networking and around what it means to have a network. It's something that I think is incredibly abstract for a large part of our lives. I didn't know what networking really meant until um, long after college. So we're trying to actually take these students and say, okay, here's your network. You're going to add to it this summer. We're going to help you keep track of it. We're going to help you understand when you can reach out to different people and how to do that effectively. And, um, you know, we've, we're really fortunate to have some amazing leaders in Silicon Valley who are very excited about these students. And so we want to make sure that they know that their email inbox is open, you know, they're available by phone, they'll meet with them. So that's definitely something that we focus on. Yeah. Um, what, else, what else are you trying to do and, and how are you trying to get people into the program and get, yeah. you know, get find new new. New people like new Amy's, uh, new Amy's <laughs> yeah. who are uh, going to be the up and comers and, and yeah, keep them yeah. involved and keep them choosing that tech track instead of going to right. some other career. Because yeah. you, could, you could do anything with your life, right? Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. I mean, Carnegie Mellon on your uh, certificate, yeah. you can do. You could go to politics, you could go to medicine, you could go wherever you want, right? Yeah. So how do, you, how do you get people to stay engaged and stay happy even though this is a pretty male-dominated world? Yeah. yeah. So. We're in the process of recruiting for next summer. So we're actually uh, recruiting about 20 fellows for next summer and looking for about 10 to 15 um, startups. But alongside that, we're working to start creating this alumni network. We have five members of the alumni network right now. Yeah. But that's something that we're really working on and they're really gonna be taking part of the lead of what does that look like? How do we support one another? How do we, you know, whether it's a question in class, how, choosing which company to go to, or you know, a few years from now, founding a company, they can kind of call on each other and and then look back down the pipeline and help others coming through Code 2040. Yeah. Well, you yeah. should talk to Victoria Ransom. She just sold her company, Wildfire Interactive, and one of the best CEOs. Yeah. I expect you awesome. to do the same thing in the next couple of years, right? Yeah, <laughs> you'll see me again. <laughs> well, give me a call awesome. when you're ready to talk. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, it's good, good work that you're doing. Um, where do we learn more about it? Code2040.org, or you yeah. can follow us on Twitter at, at Code2040. Very cool. Well, thank yeah. you so much for coming out. Thank you. And uh, let me know when you start your new robotics company. <laughs> <laughs>